and I'm going to spin the locks in and then I'll ply it afterwards. You can do it as a core spin, that's not a problem, I may do that again in the future. Um, but I just wanted to do something that was really simple and easy to do and it wasn't too stressful and it's something that you, as a thin, a thicker thin yarn, you can use as singles, you don't need to ply it at all, you just need to steam set it and then you've, you've got a single lock spin yarn. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. Now, if anybody's been fortunate enough to order my locks, I always make a point of making sure they've all been separated as much as possibly can. You'll always, you may get the ones where there's one or two stuck in there together, but they're always be open-ended because I do make a point of going through all my locks and making sure that they're not matted at the ends and that you can use them from the straight off when you, when you buy them and they arrive in the post. So there we go. So I'm using these. And I have this, can you see the glitter in that? I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, you can just make out the glitter. So this is a, a bat I created for this project. And this, this yarn, once it's done and I've plied it, I will be adding to the website. And what I'm gonna do once I've plied it is I'm gonna do the next technique, which is plying on beads. Here's the reason why I'm not coarse spinning it, because I want this to go into my shop because it is full of these gorgeous, sky blues baby blues hints very hints of teals there's a little bit of gray in there but it's like the palest gray and some mild really pale purpley lavender sort of lilac colors and that's the same for my wheels as well, and my locks as well so you've got those purples you've got some really dark colors in there you've got some greens and there's teals so i wanted it to be a really mermaidy sort of look and i will look for some beads to go with that in that sort of thing so I wanted to just really show you how I do my lock spinning so as I say whenever you buy my locks they should always be able to open them up which means that if you're felting it means you can just stab them straight and start creating a hairline like from bottom to top and up and create your part and then work on the other side but if you're using them for spinning ideally you want them to be open at the top on the cut end not the tail end, but the cut end. And it means that as you're spinning, it'll just um, attach itself really easily. And then you can just drag them down and do all sorts. You can leave them hanging out the, out the yarn, or you can spin all the way through and then catch it with it. And I will show you both of those sort of ideas. And you've seen me doing them before. So this yarn I want slightly textured. I want it to have a really luxurious look about it. And I want the coarse bond to have the beads in there as well so yep that's what we're doing today and i've already pre-drafted out the bat and this is i think this is a 100 gram bat and i've got loads of glitter silver glitter in there so yeah that's what we're going to do this afternoon so if you've got any questions or if you want me to do anything specific in my content then just drop me a message below down below there's a little arrow on the right side of the screen you're facing you is like a little arrow it's black arrow and it has my description but underneath there you'll have conversations and you can just drop me a comment whenever you feel like it and I'll always answer back and if you can't get if you can't figure that out no problem just drop me a message on my Facebook account or on my Instagram and I will do the best I can to um, accommodate you so I hope you enjoy this video see you in a bit well, first of all, I'm going to spin this yarn as a thick and thin, well this, this roving as a thick and thin to get me started. So I've got my Fantasia Kromsky here today, I need to make sure that I put that in the top with the Art Bobbin flyer and the Art Bobbin 100 gram bobbins on there, just unravel this leader yarn first. And take off this excess fluff, as you always end up with excess fluff on the end of your leader yarns. Just trying to get a bit more of that off and some of this thread that's stuck on there. There we go, nice and clean. Okay. So I'm going to get the end of my roving and I've dragged it out. These are the strips, that are, it's not roving, it's strips taken from a bat. So I'm just going to sort out my tension. Okay. I don't like to spin my wool too tightly and I'm going to spin it, spin it in an anti clockwise direction. Um, partly because it means if you want to spin it to knit straight from the locks with the um, single yarn with the locks incurred then once you steam set that then you're good to go but 
if I want to play it, I have to remember that I'm spinning it in a clockwise direction, which still means that I can I can easily knit with it. It's not going to be a problem. Um, it just means I have to remember that when I'm plying that I've gone anti-clockwise, but I need to remember to spin it in a clockwise direction. So I'm going this way. Bit too tight that. There we go. I don't like it. I don't like my arm being uh, my tension being too tight. So I'm just gonna get it going for a few yards, and then I'll start adding in my locks. So I'm just gonna bring my thumb down like this to make sure that it catches and you don't end up with too many weird lumpy pieces. Push it up there, see? And if you make sure that when you're spinning with an art flyer, that your yarn is central to this large orifice here. And it means you get a really good tension ratio as well. I mean, if you're up like this, then you're not. And then if you're down like that, which is a hand, it's a habit you're going to get into. Um, but you want to try and make sure that your yarn is going in centrally to your orifice. It just helps with making sure that everything gets an equal distribution of the tension. So I'm just going to slow it down there a sec. And then I've got these wispy bits here. So I'm going to grab one of the locks. Oh, there's two there. And I'm going to make sure that it's open full at the end. And then I'm going to spin that through. And it's going to start catching. Now, see, because I'm going in an anti-clockwise direction, the lock's going in an anti-clockwise direction. So I'm just going to find the rest. I'm going to get my, my, well, my stripped bat or roving. And I'm going to then spin start that again and wait for that to catch up there we go and that's stuck on there and then I'm going to go back over just to lock that in place so you'll see me do this a few times just do a little bit further I want some thickish pieces. I don't want like massive coils or anything like that but when I'm plying it I want it to have a bit of texture in there. And I'm going to take another lock and I'm going to open the lock up. I'm going to place it against my fibres there, the yarn, and that will catch. I'm going to pull this away and let that spin all the way down and then catch the fibres in underneath. And there I have one dangly lock. There we go. So you just keep drafting it like you would do anyway if you were doing singles. You just remember every so often you're going to have to break a piece off, add in your lock, and then make sure that you join that lock to the rest of your fibres so it locks it in place. So I'm just making a nice chunky section here, nice and thick, so when I apply it later on I've got a really good healthy thickness of fibre section. So I would say I've probably got about 50 grams of locks here, which you can buy from me directly from my website. Right, so this is quite a large, large one, but I'm going to see if I can split this into two pieces. So, how big that is there. So there's a few strands in here together. I'm just going to gently tease them up at the top and split it apart. I'm going to grab my locks and strip that off. And then I'm going to start my wheel again and wait for them to catch. And you see them turning now? That's them caught. So I'm just going to pull those bits back so it's not too floofy. Look how shiny that goes. There we go. It looks almost like silk. And then before it goes too far, I want to pull out a section of my fluff and catch that in there. And I'll catch a little bit more to make it thicker. And then I've ended up with some textured yarn sections. 
それからどうぞでも Because the way I've carded this, it, it generally it doesn't want to go too thick, which is not a problem because I, I don't want it too thick. I want this yarn that if somebody buys it, that they can actually knit with it. You don't have to just felt with it or crochet with it as well. Use it for trims on a nice winter cardigan or even a, um, a shawl that you've knitted and you just want it to look a little bit more posher or, or a cowl or something like that. So I'm going to pull my section off now and with that piece that I ripped off earlier I'm going to let that just take its hold on that section there and then I'm going to get so far down I'm actually going to just connect at the top bit there, move that lock in front of my hand and then start spinning. I know what you end up with is a lock spawn into a single. It will straighten itself out once I set it. So there's another lock, another fat bit, another fat bit. And literally just carry on like that. When you catch a chunky bit, just make sure that the twist catch on it because you can end up with a, a twist and it's not very defined like that. So you could end up with a twist and yet it twists when it gets on the thinner end. But if you just hold on for a second extra, you'll end up with a bit more twist in that section, which means it will hold more firmly in your yarn. taking your time but enjoying it at the same time because you're supposed to relax when you do this sort of thing it's just about being playful and playing with textures and things like that I mean at the end of the day if you buy it and you don't want to use it or if you've made it and done it yourself you, you can stick it those little battery operated LED lights on it and stick on your Christmas tree make a garland out of it at the end of the day so whilst I'm at this end now I'm going to get this really thick section of locks and I'm going to spin that on there and then I'm going to grab one of my other nests that I've made up I'm just going to pull that out and I am going to catch that on the same section where I've just caught those locks and then I'm going to bring those locks around them about. Yeah, I am going the right direction. There we go.
Right, so there we have it. Thick and thin, spun yarn with glitter and locks. So I will leave this on the bobbin for a couple of days and I will do the next video of this before I do my breed study video and I will apply this with threaded beads on a yarn. So hopefully you'll enjoy that section, but that's what I'm gonna do with this eventually. But now you've got the general gist of how to spin singles um, and add locks onto your yarn. And from that perspective there, once you put on an Iddy Noddy and um, steam set it, you could, I suppose, wash it if you wanted to, but steam setting does the exact same job. And you can literally go from that to knitting a textured jumper or cuffs or collars or whatever it is that you want to do even a textured cowl you can crochet with this as well um, so yeah that's what you can do with that so steam set it it's so much quicker leave it on the line just to chill out for 20 minutes and then wind it up into a cake or a ball and then you're ready to go um, but next week I or over the weekend I will do a video of this being hand spun plied with um, beads do you know i've got one of these brains this week with beads plied onto this locks and then i will do the little knobbly bits and pieces and everything else that goes with that and then put that on the, on the web um, on the channel next week don't forget saturday mornings well lunchtime ish i'm on instagram live and you can come and ask me questions give me queries as to things you maybe want me to do on content next week definitely the end of next week will be the first video for the Kerry Hill um, breed studies I will be washing that fleece during the week while I've still got hot weather and it's going to cool down over the next few days so that's going to be a reprieve for me but I need to get wool done and dyed and washed and dried over the next few days before we end up with rain until December which generally seems to happen in Cumbria anyway take care of yourselves remember it's hot out there eat little and often and drink plenty take care of yourselves hopefully I'll see you tomorrow if not I'll see you next week bye <laughs>